Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and today, <laughs> sorry, I just realized I say the same thing every time and I wasn't even trying to. Today is my second Asian readathon vlog. We are tackling prompt number three, I believe, which is a book by an Asian author who has a world or experience that is very different than yours. And so, ladies and gentlemen, drum roll, drum roll, please. We are reading Kaikei by Vishnavi Patel. This came out last month. I just got it in the mail. Oh, it smells new. I am so excited. I have heard nothing but great things about this book. And this is the author's debut novel. And I think I read somewhere online that she's like a law student. Yeah, Vishnavi Patel is a law student focusing on constitutional law and civil rights. I guess in her free time, she likes to write novels. I wish I was that smart. This is a retelling of an Indian epic. That was, it's like, I should probably read up on these facts, but it's a really, really, really old epic story. It's like Homer or the Odyssey or something. The epic's name is Ramayan and it follows Ram or Rama. I'm debating whether I wanna read it before or after, or not the whole thing. It's like 24,000 lines of verse. Um, so I was debating whether to read a summary of it before or after, but I got the gist that it's about a prince named Rama. He's banished, he does something and he comes back and he's like the righteous hero blah 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 our story is about kaikei who is the queen who banishes the prince in the story i don't know whether she's justified because i haven't read the epic but this might be the villain origin story or maybe she's not a villain maybe she's just a woman who has motivations that i'm not aware of either way i'm very interested because i think it's her journey just growing up down here the blurb says it's the unforgettable tale of a woman determined to leave her mark in a world where gods and men dictate the shape of things to come patel's mesmerizing debut shines a brilliant light on the vilified queen of the ramayan so i feel like this is going to say a lot about first of all feminism but also agency and independence and inner strength oh that sounds amazing i chose this book for this prompt because first of all kake is a queen i am not a queen i'm a peasant so obviously in that sense of the world i cannot relate but also I believe this is in ancient India. So definitely a time which I can't relate to. And also Kakei and the people of that time, I believe in the Indian gods and goddesses that controlled their destiny, yada, yada. So that's another aspect to a world that's very different than mine. And just as in my first video, if you wanna check out my first video, my first vlog, I will link it in one of these corners. Um, I am going to be trying all the foods from the different nationalities of the books that I'll be reading. So. I think tomorrow night we're gonna go down to Honolulu and get some good old Indian food. I've never been to this place cause Honolulu is kind of expensive, but let's do it. I'm excited. So I am going to start this book. It is, today's Wednesday after work. So it's kind of getting late. I still have to cook dinner, but we'll see how far I can get into this. Okay, wait, let's read the first sentence. Ooh, there's an author's note right in front. Chapter one. I was born on the full moon under an auspicious constellation, the holiest of positions. Much good it did me. Ooh! Hi, it is Thursday after work and my weekend has begun because I have tomorrow off. So yesterday I only got to page 32, which is not the fault of the book. I just had too much to do last night. I can't talk. Also, if you ever hear me sound like I'm drunk, 99% of the time, I'm just being an idiot. I just am not very good at speaking. Like I slur, I stutter. Thank God for editing tools. Anyway, so right now in the story, Kakei is a little girl. I think she's 11 years old and her mother's just been, I guess exiled would be the word. And she has, obviously she's upset by that, but she's found this kind of inner power. That's all I'm gonna say about it. I mean, I'm only on page 32 and I'm pretty sure it said it on the flap that she finds her inner power. So how and why that is, is very interesting to me. And I can see several ways in which this could unfold. Honestly though, even if this weren't, a story about like a queen or someone who comes into power. I just love reading about how people grew up and the relationship that Kake has with her brother. What's his name? Yudaji. By the way, there's a very handy character list right in the front. Their brother and sister, I think they're twins and their relationship right now, they're like best friends and oh, 
I'm actually really close to my brother. So it's like, it's getting me in the feels already. I want to see how that relationship progresses. And I already have a favorite quote and it's on the first page. The people of Barat have often blamed my father for my sins as if a woman cannot own her actions. And then a little further down, if he bears any fault for my actions, it is through his inaction. So yeah, I have nothing to do tonight and tomorrow, but read this book. Oh, that was really embarrassing. And tonight we're going down to Honolulu. I think it's called Kamana Kitchen. It's like this little hole in the wall place, but it's got such high reviews. So I will take you along with us. There is a life I lead in this city. Hurrying to cut my teeth I can take what I need to get by It doesn't make it easy The other piece of my heart moves slow Somewhere in the great unknown When I return from the afterglow Will you carry me like I am whole again? Hey guys, it's Friday and I am not working and it just feels wonderful. So last night, as we saw, we went out to Kamana Kitchen and it was wonderful. It was so yummy. We had um, a solid chai, which is kind of like a chai tea, but it's milkier and there's something else in it, but I don't know what it is, but it tastes really good. We had mixed pakora, so it was like a mix of vegetables, chicken, and paneer, which you saw with a couple of different sauces. That I don't know what they were, but they were amazing. And then I had paneer tikka masala and Grant had chicken tikka masala. So yummy. We also had cheese naan and we dipped it into the curry sauce. Oh my God, that sauce is so good. We took some home with us, so I get to have it for lunch today. And then I had rice pudding, which I almost forgot to film, but it was damn good. It almost tasted like, um, like lavender. So yeah, I definitely want to go there again. They were so nice. Oh my Oh my gosh and everyone in there you could kind of tell that they were all regulars like they, it just had that feel like that homey feel so yes i definitely want to go there again however downtown honolulu just like oof, the roads down there and the highways of oahu are just absolutely insane <laughs> especially in the dark. So like, I thought Grant, my husband, was going to kill us both, just like in anger, <laughs> but then also like in an accident. I don't know, I think it's just cause it's, there's so many people here and there need to be so many highways. And it's such a small island that like, the roads are weaving like in and out and over each other and they split off and then they split immediately on. And on the highway, I don't know where you guys are from, but in Florida, if you're on the highway, there's an exit and then after the exit, there's a merge onto the highway. But here, there's a merge and then immediately after the merge, you have to get over to exit, like, oof. And then I guess it's cause we're not used to driving in a city. So like in Honolulu, if you take the wrong turn, like if you go past where you're supposed to, the streets aren't like a left or right. It's like you have to go in a circle all the way around the block to get back to where you were. If I go there again, I'm either taking like an Uber from a place a little closer or I will drive because my husband might divorce me. <laughs> I didn't actually read any more last night. We were just kind of chilling, but I have gotten a third of the way through and I am becoming so invested in the story, invested in Kakei, but also, oh, First of all, her brother and her have had a fight and it sucks because I'm older and I know that Yudaja and her like, uh, I just, I just want to, I want to be their mother. But Kaikei is on a different path now. She has gotten married and she is in a new kingdom and she is having to make these relationships and use her power, but also just, you know, learn how to make and create and sustain relationships. And I think that's something that is definitely true to being a young person. Um, I think she's 17 years old now. And so I feel like this right now at the third way, at the one third mark of the book, the story is kind of, you know, she's had her ups and downs and right now it's at an incline. And I just, <laughs> I feel like because I know the gist uh, through the author's note, through even in the writing, she, Kaikei is talking as if from the future. And she says things that I didn't even know happened. She's like spoiling things for me, probably because it's letting us know that first of all, I should have known this story to begin with. But second of all, that the plot and 
the machinations of that story and that plot line, that is not the point to this. The point is her growing, her finding herself, her making mistakes and learning from them, hopefully. But at the same time, I am so fucking worried for her. I want it all to end happily. And usually I'm not that kind of person. I really love it when an ending is kind of melancholy or it's like not a happy ending because it feels real. But I care so much about her right now that I just, I want Kake to have a happy ending and I want her to, to just make good decisions from this point on and for everyone to understand her. Ugh. So yeah, I'm thoroughly addicted and um, it's around lunchtime today. No one's home, so I'm like, I'm reading aloud, like I'm I'm telling this tale of Kakei and it feels, it, it feels really fun. I'm enjoying this book. So yeah, I'll definitely be finishing this today. Although now that I've said it, it's probably not gonna happen. I feel like I have so much energy because I'm not working right now. So excuse my, me, just excuse me. Well, it has been two or three days since I last, oh my God, I just ate my hair. Since I last updated you and <clears throat> I did not finish the book. I'm on page 284. My friend Pedro is leaving the island, so we spent all weekend celebrating him and drinking too much. But now I am just dying to finish this, and yes, a part of me is dreading it because tension is rising in this story, and I can see everything going to shit, and I don't want it to. Ugh. So we shall see how far we get today. I am not saying that I'm gonna finish it today because then it won't happen, so we'll see. Guys, I finished it. I finished all 475 pages and I'm trying to gather my thoughts here. First of all, this was wonderful. It was very well written, especially for a debut novel. And it was so rich. Obviously, Vaishnavi Patel was taking influence from this epic, but I feel like in the author's note, she does say a few of the things that she added. She added from various retellings, but also things from her own imaginings. And I feel like the things that she created herself were more strong because I did notice, first of all, I think it was, <laughs> very long and that's both good and a little tiring if you're trying to get it all done at once this is the kind of book though that i feel like when i took a little break away from it as soon as i picked it back up i went right back into the text and that's pretty rare i would say i mean that means that this there's a really strong sense of atmosphere in here but there were points especially at the very peak of the conflict and the story where it felt like Vaishnavi's story and the original story were clashing and it felt like that was the weakest point of the book because it was like Vaishnavi was taking liberties which I liked um but she had to kind of yield to the actual story the spine of the retelling and I kind of just wish she went on her own path I feel like that's sometimes a weakness that retellings have because some authors try to stick really closely to the text and then some authors really weave their own version. But I think for her first novel, oh my god, this was amazing. At one point, I was kind of a little worried because I was like, what is this saying? First of all, it was like, what? So if women fight the patriarchy, then our punishment is just to be shamed and misunderstood and punished but of course that was not <laughs> that was not the lesson i don't think that could ever happen but for a minute there i was kind of worried like <laughs> i feel like this had a lot more to say about the responsibilities that we have as people to help our world not even in our lifetime but maybe in future lifetimes and that makes a lot of sense because vashnavi she focuses on civil rights and constitutional law so she is definitely someone who can speak about that and how she portrayed that in this story I think was really fitting. But honestly, the biggest takeaway I got from this was just Kaikei as a character, as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, as herself. Oh, I feel like this might be the Titanic kind of situation where if I reread this, I might just stop in the middle and make up my own ending. But I really liked the 
fantastical element to this. I really liked Kai Kai's power. When you guys read it, if you guys read it, I would love to know your opinion of it because it was so kind of original, um, but also ancient at the same time because I feel like fate and destiny, there's so much of that in mythology in, in and in Indian mythology, Greek mythology, even just, you know, biblical mythology. All in all, I am very, very happy that I read this. Although I feel like I'm aching like with disappointment because I can't imagine, first of all, being a woman at this time. <sighs> But also, I feel like, wow, when an author can make me feel so close to a character and make me so worried and so almost up in arms with anger with how she was treated and misunderstood, that was one thing that was really kind of irksome. There was a little bit of miscommunication in here. And I understand why it was important because as a woman of that time, you can only give so much information without, you know, being condemned for, hey, even in what the 1800s they were accusing women of being witches just for like singing or some shit. <laughs> One other great thing I loved in this is that although I really find it hard to read about your favorite characters going through it, there is something to be said of the strength of a person who can be so misunderstood and live through it. I think that's where strength in a person really shows and I'm glad we got to, you know, go through the mud with her. <sighs> I feel like they should teach this in school. Like I feel like this would be such a great thing for kids to be reading in high school. If you're interested in mythology at all, I would highly, highly recommend picking this up. But also if you really love um, feminist literature or things about empowerment and honestly about Indian culture, ancient Indian culture and mythology. It was very rich with detail and it's been a while since I've really been transported to a place. Wow. I'm trying to think of my rating right now, but I don't really know because it did feel a little long and there were a couple of continuity maybe between Vaishnavi's version and the original and you know, the battle of those two texts trying to come out. But I feel like this is a four and a half, maybe a four. I'll think more about it, but I really, really, really enjoyed this. And I'm so glad that it came to me. And I can't believe how many versions of Kaikei we, I'm sorry, I keep talking. I feel like I'm wrapping it up and then I'm like thinking about more shit to say. But this spans so many years and with it, we really got to see Kaikei grow and learn. And that's, I think the beauty in this is that you see when people learn lessons and you see how that can make them a good person. And then you can see how some people do not learn their lessons and how that matriculates over time. Did I use that word correctly? I don't know. And how what their actions can do based on their teachings can influence other people. And it's scary. Just the thought of people in power and powerful positions. This was a little scary. <laughs> and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say on the politics of it all, but anyway. Um, thank you guys for joining me for this Asian Readathon Asian Readathon vlog number two. Um, and oh, I feel like I'm gonna be in a little bit of a a book coma after this. I feel like there's so much I want to think about. So my last recommendation, if you want a lot to think about, read this book. Okay, I'm gonna go before I start vomiting words at you again. Bye.